بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أي رحبة في الله Continue on our study of Shara Sunnah by Imam Barbahari Rahimah Allah Ta'ala We reach the 18th point which is to have faith in the punishment of the grave So this is also a part of the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah Qala Imam Barbahari Rahimah Allah Ta'ala Wal Imanu bi Adhab al-Qabr wal Munqar wal Naqir Imam Barbahari Rahimahullah Ta'ala said to have faith in the punishment of the grave and munkar and naqir, the malaika that set, uh, that will appear at the, at the grave during the time of a person's punishment in the grave or their um, or their um, their comfort in the grave. And to have faith or iman in the punishment of the grave, ayyul habiti fillah, is by ijma of ahl sunnati wal jama'ah. So this is by ijma. And this ijma has been uh, pronounced or articulated by Imam Abu Hassan al Ash'ari in his Risala. إلى أهل الثغر and the only people or groups or sects that deny this the punishment of the grave are the Khawarij and some of the Mu'tazila and some other modern day groups who deny this like Hizb Tahrir and I think their origin I believe is in the UK or at least they have a lot of activity there. And there are a modern day uh, group or jama'ah or his. But in fact, you may not classify them as a sect and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. With regards to the punishment of the grave, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al kareem in front of the fire will they be brought, morning and evening. And on the day when the hour will be established, it will be said to the angels, cause Fir'aun's people to enter the severest torment. And from this evidence here, this is one of the verses in the Quran which support the punishment of the grave in Surah Al Ghafir. And this is because in the verse it mentions that <clears throat> the, the people, Ahl of Fir'aun, they will have two punishments so that they will actually have some torment before the Day of Judgment. And which will actually be the severest torment, the even greater torment. And that is the evidence that in that life of Barzakh, which is the life of the grave, after our death, our physical death in this life, that a person will either be tormented in the grave or they will be, have comfort in the grave. According, in accordance with their iman, if they're from Ahli iman, then they will be in the law have comfort in the grave, and depending on their level of sin, and so forth. And from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is the Hadith of Ibn Abbas radiyallahu taala anhu. أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مر بقبرين فقال إنهم من يعذبان وما يعذبان في كبير أما أهرهما فكان لا يستتر من البو وما الآخر فكان يمشي بالنميمة فأخذ جريد رتبة فشق نصفين فغرز بكل قبر واحد فقلنا يا رسول الله لما فعلت هذا قال لعلهم يخفف عنهما ما لم يبسا and that's the شاهد there رواه بخاري ومسلم in this hadith in Sahihain, 
the hadith of Ibn Abbas عنهما, that the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam <coughs> walked by two graves. <coughs> and then he said, Verily they will be uh, they're being punished, letting us know. This is ithbat of the punishment of the grave. Verily they're being punished, and they're not being punished for something which is big that the people think of as something big and major. And then he said, rather, uh, uh, as for one of them, uh, he did not protect himself from soiling himself uh, from urine when he urinated. And as for the other, is he used to tell stories to cause enmity between the people. Wa'iyadu billah. That shows us also the seriousness of spreading namima and lies about people. That you have to be very, it's a very serious thing that you don't spread about uh, your brothers and sisters in Islam and even non muslims about anyone. You should not spread tales about them in order to spread evil, in order to spread enmity and hatred with the people. And unfortunately, this has become something common in these days that we have some of our brothers and sisters spreading this about people who make da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spreading namima about them we're not talking about speaking about someone rightfully for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala due to their bid'ah and their zandaka and their heresy and their kufr or whatever they are into we're not talking about that but we're talking about those people who spread tales about people in order to spread fasad which we have all over the internet, all over Twitter and, and Facebook and YouTube and this site and that site, you have tons of this. So we have to be careful about going to the gossip and all the forums. Be careful of those things. Because those things can be a key or a tool, a wasila to spreading facade, to spreading evil. And the kind of evil which leads to the punishment of the grave so it shows you how serious it is to spread namima and hatred between the people and in another hadith of the messenger of Allah and, and so the, the, and in the end of the hadith so the prophet said uh, he, he put the, the branches the wet branches on the grave he 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 said, so they're not being punished for something big, uh, something large. And then we mentioned the two people. One didn't co uh, properly protect himself while they urinated, went to the bathroom, akramakum Allah. And the other person, they spread namima. So the Prophet wasallam took a branch, a wet branch, and he split it in half. And he put it, uh, a part of it on each of the graves. One part on one grave and one on the other grave. And he said, hopefully, uh, that it will uh, make their punishment lighter. This will lighten their punishment. And this shows you the rift and the lean of the, 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 the mercy of the Prophet wasallam. And it shows also that this was a miracle of the Messenger of Allah wasallam. This isn't a practice which we should go around practicing. We don't put flowers on the graves. We don't uh, put these things and think that they're going to have any effect upon what's going on in the grave. But rather, this was something specifically for the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. And the shahid, or the main point here mentioned in this hadith, is showing that the people were being punished in the grave. Because the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, said, innuhum liya'adhaban. Verily, they're being punished, and they're not being punished for something which is great. Were they being punished? They were dead. They were being punished in the grave, in Barzakh, in the other, the next life. They began that rihla to the next life, the marhala thaniya, the next dar, the next, uh, the, you know, this is the, right now we live, as the Salaf used to say, dar al amal, wa dar al akhira huwa dar al jaza. That this life is the time for deeds. And the next life, once we get to Barzakh and so forth, that's the time when we'll be paid, we'll be recompensed for the deeds that we did, either good or bad. And the beginning of that recompense starts in the grave in Barzakh. And 
In addition to that, in another narration, on Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when the deceased or one of you is put in the grave, two black angels having blue eyes come to him. One of them is called Munkar, and the other is called Nakir. And so this is also evidence, and this is reported in Tirmidhi, declared Hassan by Imam al-Albani, rahimahumullah, ala, ala, ala muhaddithin, jami'an, that he said it was, it, he uh, said it was Hassan, and it's in his Sahih al jami And in that hadith, the shahid again, is that this is the Leel ala munkar wa nakir, and that they will come in the grave. This is also the Leel ala barzakh, and what will take place in the grave. And it's a long hadith, and there are many ahadith which substantiate the punishment of the grave and Imam al bayhaqi wrote a whole treatise entitled Ithbat Adab al-Qabr consisting of 240 narrations about the uh, about the punishment of the grave so those people who deny that they are denying something from the usul of of the aqidah uh, the itiqad of Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah and they're at a dangerous juncture in their Iman and in their lives and they need to make tawbah and correct their beliefs. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala said, the punishment of the grave is true. The question of those in the grave is true. The resurrection is true. The day of judgment is true. Paradise and the fire are true. Whatever else is reported in the sunnah and so mentioned by the scholars and their followers throughout the lands of the Muslims is true. Reported by Imam al-Bayhaqi and Munaqib al-Shafi'i. Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal rahimahullah ta'ala said the principles of the sunnah according to us are to cling to that which the companions of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala majma'in were upon and to follow them to have faith in the punishment of the grave and that this ummah will be tested in their graves and asked about faith in Islam who is the, the, his lord who is his prophet Munkar and Naqir will come to him as Allah wills and however Allah wishes and this was from the Usul of Sunnah by Imam Ahmed. So Ayala Habatifillah, according to the Madhab of Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah, uh, which is based on Kitabi Allah wa Sunnah al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Faham of the Salaf of this Ummah, that the punishment of the grave exists and those angels, Munkar wa Nakir, exist. They will come to the deceased in the grave and they will question, Men Rabbuk, Ma Deenak. Women Nabiyuk, uh, they will ask, Who is your Lord? What is your religion? And who is your Prophet? And Ahli Iman will be able to answer those questions. Uh, and the people of disbelief will not be able to answer those uh, questions. And that will determine their punishment in the grave. And there's a hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hadith we mentioned, uh, Munkar wa Nakir, which mentions this issue and details it in the hadith. So then you have a nas detailing this issue. Uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the punishment of the grave. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Those are some of the important aspects of that issue. And for further details, perhaps look into, go to some of those ahadith about the punishment of the grave that you find in Bukhari and Muslim and the explanations of those hadith in other books of Ittiqad which go into depth. And we're going to keep our study very brief, just affirming these aspects of creed with some of the ta'alitat or editorials of the ulama and where I deem it necessary to go into depth about an issue we'll go into depth and where it seems less necessary to go in depth in the issue then we will uh, move on to the next issue and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam